Hey Trappers, Dale Billingsley here, Billingsley Brand Lures. So I thought today I would share with you how I assemble my otter snares. Uh, make sure that you check your local laws, you know, all your regulations, whatever state you live in. Make sure that what you're doing is legal. If you've got to have deer stops or breakaways or if you've got to have cable restraints versus a snare, whatever it might be, be sure to check your local laws. I have to say that because otherwise I catch hell for not. So anyway, now that we've got that over with, here's how I assemble my, my otter snares. I, uh, I start with 1x19 564th cable. Now I do not recommend that you use 7x7 7 7 564th. Either if you're going to use 7x7, 7 7, use the 332nds. I think you're going to have some trouble with an otter breaking. 7x7, seven 564th, seven, but they will not break the 1x19. It's a little bit stiffer. It's a little tougher cable. So if you use 564th, use the 1x19. If you're going to use 7x7, seven seven, then use 332nds. So I cut it. Oh, you know, handy dandy ruler out here, our tape. And these are cut at 21 inches long. That will make about a five or a five and a half inch loop by the time it's all done. So the first thing we do is we take a single ferrule, slide it on the end of our cable, put it on our anvil, take our big hammer, give it a few whacks, a couple more. There. Now it's down, mashed on there good and tight. Now I don't have, I don't like... I shouldn't say I don't like. I don't use a crimper, you know, a uh, bench swagger. I, I like to hammer my ferrules on. That way I know they're, they're positively on there. There's no question. And then the next thing I do is take a 332nd cam lock because that's what's legal where I'm going. That's the legal lock I can use. And I, I put, it on my, put it on my cable. And then if you use a cam, you've got to put a 90 degree bend here at the ferrule to make that loop hang straight. So you just take your fingers and just roll it around and now that loop hangs straight as you can see. There it is. And then I use, for a support collar, I use the, the poly tubing. And I think the diameter, the outside diameter is like 3 16 but don't quote me on that. Um, what I would do if you're going to use these over versus the, the bottom whammies is I would just take a piece of cable and a piece of number 9 or number 11 gauge wire, whatever you're going to use for a support wire, which I had gone over in my last video that I put up, uh, and just take it with you to the hardware store and just slide it in a piece of hose, slide your number 9 in there or your number 11, and see what's going to fit for you. Um, that's the easiest way to do that. So anyway, I put the put the support collar on the cable, and I take a double ferrule, and I put one end of it here through the cable, Then we take our 600 pound test Roscoe crane swivel, that's very important, you cannot use just a regular barrel swivel for fishing, it has to be the Roscoe crane swivel, otherwise they're just going to break it, they're going to walk right through it like it's not even there. These, they will not. And the only time I ever have one of these broke is snaring, snaring coyotes and if you accidentally hook a deer or something of that sort. That's the only time I ever have one of these broke. And so anyway, you slide it on there and then you bend the cable back around on itself, slide it through the other side of the double ferrule and cinch it all down tight like that. And you lay it on your anvil and you take your big hammer and you give her a few whacks. You master shut, master down on there. Now I take 26 inches of 332nd 7x7. Seven seven. This is the tail of the snare. This is, this is fine to use. I wouldn't do anything smaller than 332nds though. So then all you do is just take another double ferrule. Again, just slide one side through, through the ferrule like this. You put it through the other end of your, your crane swivel, bring it back around on itself, put it in the other end 
the other side, I should say, the other side of the double ferrule. Cinch it down tight. Lay it on your anvil again. Give it a few whacks. Oh, camera's tipping on me. Sorry about that. I had some tef technical difficulties. And then all you do is take another double ferrule and put it on the off end of the cable. And that's where you're going to attach your, your stake, your disposable, your, you know, rebar, whatever you might choose. Uh, but anyway, I just pull down a loop about so big. And again, just lay it on your anvil and give it a few whacks. And there it is, guys. Now, the only thing left to do is to load this cable so that it hangs in a perfect circle. And like I said, that's going to hang about a five, five and a half inch loop. And if you put that about five or five and a half inches up off the deck, the you know, wherever the otter is traveling, if you raise that up about five, five and a half inches up off the ground, you're going to have good success. You're going to next snare a lot of otter with it, and you're going to have good success with it. Uh, guys, I sure appreciate you tuning in to watch. If you would, please hit that subscribe button for me. Hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I sure appreciate it. Uh, to figure out how to load these snares, go back into my videos and watch building and loading snare video. Uh, it's there and it shows you exactly how to do it. And, uh, that loop will hang in a almost perfect circle for you. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Once again, this is Dale Billingsley with another one signing out.